I just wanted to say hi before we got into our project. We will be making, well, you know what we're making. You clicked on this video. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into it. <laughs> exactly how much high density foam to buy and cut we will be measuring our knees so starting from one side of your knee you will measure all the way to the other side of your knee quickly jot down the number you see and we will be using that number on the next slide whatever your measurements are you will add two inches and cut a square of your total for example my knee measurements are 11 inches plus the two is 13 so I'll be cutting my foam square 13 by 13 go ahead mark up your foam and get to cutting <music> Joann's and you can see behind me is all the high density foam so one thing that's cool about Joann's you can buy this by the yard I am in the upholstery department just past all the regular fabric it's usually toward the back corner to the left of me is all the upholstery fabric this section right here is the high density foam and you'll find a bunch of pillow inserts here all Joann's has these as an option uh, you can use a coupon on this stuff because it can be kind of pricey but for the project we're doing you're not gonna need too much of it so it'll be fine. And one other option here is they have it pre-cut already. So you see right here, these are all the pre-cut options. We'll go to Hobby Lobby and I'll show you their pre-cut options, but Hobby Lobby doesn't have the option to buy this stuff by the yard. So I just wanna show you what this stuff is. Your pillow pieces, the printed side should be facing each other and your trim should be sandwiched in between those pieces. You'll want to make sure your trim is not facing out, it should be facing inside. Time to use your sewing machine, so go ahead and pull that out. You'll want to make sure it is sandwiched as shown. Starting at the bottom right, you will begin sewing continuously around the three sides, but on the fourth side you will stop halfway. You'll want to make sure there is an opening so that we can turn it inside out after which we will insert our foam and then close it shut. We need to put the foam inside the pillow. Now to get your foam in, you are going to want to bend it and it should fit right in. So after we get our cushion inside the pillowcase and centered, we will be making a stitch all the way through every single layer using a needle and a piece of thread. So after we get that cushion centered and secured, we will head over to the sewing machine to go ahead and seal this up. What I'm gonna do is, especially for uh, the people that are new to sewing, I'm gonna do them separately. Do the back first. Where the seam ends here, it'll sort of tell you where to fold. And then once this is tucked in, it kind of folds on its own. So once we get the front and the back pinned, now we are going to tuck the trim in. I would start, it's easy on the corner to be able to shove in any extra, so I'm gonna start on the long side of the seam. Save any excess for the corner. We 
have our pins secured. Now we're gonna sew it. Right now my needle is right in the center. That's where it's gonna drop. I want to shift it over more to the edge here. Uh, you can usually do that in most machines. However your machine works, you can shift the needle to the far left or the far right or in between. So I'm going to shift mine over as far as it'll go. So instead of it dropping in the center like previously, it's going to drop more over here, closer to the edge, because I want to make sure it grabs onto the um, to the lace. I am starting, the opening I believe is around here-ish. I'm starting a little further back just to give some, uh, some space to be able to back stitch and whatnot. <music> So as we come up to the corner, sew as far to the corner, not off, stay on the fabric. The last stitch, the needle should be in the fabric so that we can lift our foot and twist. My needle is in, see it's up, now it's in, all the way down. Now I'm gonna lift my foot and then turn. Now taking your fabric you have cut for your strap, you are going to fold that in half long ways. Remember your printed sides are facing each other and you are going to sew a straight seam across the longest open end. After you've sewn that long seam, go ahead and turn it inside out and it should look a little something like this. Now let's go ahead and seal up the open ends of this strap. You're gonna tuck the fabric in. Tuck it in enough where it's equal because we're gonna be sewing that. So you'll wanna make sure it's enough fabric inside so that when we sew a seam on there, it'll catch. This is an easy piece to do because it is short and it's only a straight stitch. Now that we have our strap sewn shut, we can go ahead and put on our iron-on and our Velcro. I am putting the seam at the bottom. I am going to put a piece of Velcro here and also two for the edge. I'm glad you asked. 
I'm sure I could confidently say that the majority of us know what the word nearly means, but even times when I know what a word means, I'll look it up anyway. Does anyone else do this? So here it is. By definition, the word kneeling means to position the body so that one or both knees rest on the floor. But let's take this a tad bit deeper to see what it means in Hebrew and the Greek. Side note, if anyone is interested in the basics for how to use a concordance, let me know. Concordances are these giant, intimidating Greek and Hebrew Bible dictionary things that pastors use, but any of us can use actually. And once you know how to use it, it's super fun and insightful to see what our English words really mean. So in the Hebrew, it's Barak which means to bless God as an act of adoration. It's a common form of greeting, and to kneel is to bless or be blessed. Now in the Greek, it is gonu pateo, which means to fall on the knee, the act of one imploring aid of one expressing reverence and honor. All right, now we have a foundation for what this word truly means, now let's build. Historically, kneeling has been and continues to be a clear indication of the definitions we literally just read. So like in the animal kingdom, for instance, kneeling established superiority. They kneeled to convey submission for the survival of the group, even back in the Middle Ages when the knights knelt. They were professing service and dedication to their country. And don't you love a good marriage proposal? Again, professing dedication to a person for life. Or what about in sports? So when I was researching this one, it took quite a turn from what it means now to what it meant before. I won't go into it beyond the heart of it, which has always been a sign of respect and unity. So universally around the world, it's a way of communicating respect, submission, blessing, admiration, apology, and even gratitude. So for those of you frugal friends like myself out there, it's 100% free and no tools required to bend the knee. <laughs> Just being silly, but for real. Over the centuries, there have been tools people have used to kneel. So we have the 18th century kneelers, or even the 17th century, I'm gonna insert a French, a fancy French word here. This is French for pray to God. These bless my heart because they were intended for private devotionals, which I think is beautiful. And we have the Muslims who to this day use prayer rugs. These are beautiful handcrafted ornate rugs decorated with meaningful ornate designs. And in any Catholic church you walk into, you're gonna find the pews manufactured with kneelers. So what do all these things all over the world and across time have in common? Intention of use, design, and comfort. So can you see what I'm getting at with having made this video? <laughs> so my closing thoughts on kneeling, it's communication. And what's the language? Body language. And with this common body position of kneeling, we can say, I surrender, forgive me, I give my life, or I humble myself, and so on. So now I'll be on my knees, a praying we all find a deeper significance and the desire to kneel using this super cute kneeling prayer pillow. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, I do truly hope that y'all will see the purpose for kneeling in a brighter light. So happy kneeling. Bye.